Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show and happy Monday morning to you. What a lousy weekend it was when it came to weather. Saturday, windy as all get out, just gusting. And then Sunday, just rain, 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 and more rain. I was waiting for the ark to pull up. I saw a funny post this morning, and uh, this friend of mine posted, and she said, if it gets cold one more time, I'm putting the Christmas tree back up. <laughs> And today I see we get a flash flood warning until 11 o'clock, but I look on the radar. I don't see any rain anywhere except for kind of in the Tucson area. So who knows? It might spring back up. But speaking of springing up, you've heard of squatters, right? That's been kind of making the news lately. And and the Florida governor just passed a new law that makes it easier to get a squatter out of your house. They're just nothing but scum of the earth. Um so I thought I'd take a look at Arizona and go, well, what are our squatter laws? I remember them talking about it in real estate school and just shaking my head. Really, people can just occupy your house and take it. And they can. Um, and But that's kind of not what we're seeing now. Uh, there's uh, uh, We're seeing people just doing it because they can. And, uh, you know, they kind of got emboldened because of the... Uh, um, what 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 they call that? You didn't have to pay your rent, um, so you didn't have to pay rent for a, a good year because of COVID. So they're going, well, I wonder what other ways we can live at somebody else's place for free. And they found out. And Stephanie said, here is a common law rule statement. She said, uh, or as us lawyers who refer to it as adverse possession, a real property law tenant. Each state has a statute that's similar to this CL rule. And you're right. And here it is here. Do squatters have rights in Arizona? How does it happen? Yes, like other states, Arizona squatters do have certain rights by law. Basically, a squatter may be able to legally acquire the property they're squatting on if it meets certain criteria. And to Stephanie's point here, she said adverse possession is a doctrine under which a person in possession of land owned by someone else may acquire valid title to it. So long as certain requirements are met and the adverse processor is and she's still typing um a squatter they have to be there like between three and eight years in arizona and uh, then they can make claim to the property now um but the real problem we're having right now is kind of a short-term problem i'll go back to that here in a moment and that is and this is what they're running into in places like florida and it's really bad new york because as if new york needed any other bad news um you're in, you're from Minnesota and you're going, you're a snowbird and you're going home tomorrow. Okay. You're going home tomorrow and, uh, and you haven't been paying a lot of attention to your property. As soon as you pulled out, somebody else moved in or broke in and uh, had the locks changed and stayed there. And your neighbor didn't tell you, you didn't know. And you come back next November and voila, somebody's in your house. Get out of my house. No, no it's my house. No, it's not. It's mine. Oh, I've been paying rent. Here's a, uh, Here's my new lease, all kinds of trickery going on and you're stuck. You go, what? Well, so you go to the police. Can you get them out? The police go, well, they've been there for six months. Um, you're going to have to go to court and you go to court and you're going to get them. They're either a trespasser, a trespasser, somebody like breaks in and then doesn't stay there. A squatter, somebody that breaks in, changes locks and stays there. Now you got to get them evicted. So you got to go to court. That can take up to eight weeks. Stephanie here says there are usually six elements to be satisfied. Continuous, hostile, open, notorious, actual, exclusive, uh, excuse not exclusive. Can squatters occupy any property? Yes, they can live on developed or undeveloped property. As we mentioned, if a squatter only cultivates the land, makes no improvements to buildings on the land in a time for an adverse possession claim is 10 years. They, Got to hang out there for 10 years. And then they say it's all theirs. This could be a mess. And uh, there was one gentleman that started his own company, <laughs> Squatter Removal. He's been on the news lately. And uh, they can give you a Zoom consultant. Squatter Hunters is what they're called. And it's very interesting what he said. He, he had squatters <coughs> in his mother's home. <coughs> excuse me, after his father passed away. He called the police. The police said, well, there's nothing we can do. And uh, so he started looking at the law and figured out what he could do. 
And what he could do is exactly what the squatters did. He sat outside, followed their patterns when they were coming and going, and he moved in. And he moved in with his own lease. And uh, and he sat there, and they were trying to get him to leave. And he goes, no, it's, it's, uh, here's my lease. I I moved in. They go, here's my lease. Yeah, well, it looks, gee, it looks just like mine. And uh, after a day, they were out. <laughs> I thought that was a great plan. It's like, okay, so if they're using these laws to do X, then I'm just going to follow that as well. So what he advises now is first thing you want to do is you want to call the police and somebody's in my house and, uh, you know, I didn't know they were there. How long have they been there? Well, you have to have documentation now because you're about getting ready to go to court. If the police can't do anything about it, are they trespassing or are they squatting? So you got to go, well, they're squatting. Well, how do you know that? Well, my neighbor tells me that they got there like on the 15th of April and I'm just getting back there now in November and they've been there ever since. And, uh, we're just now getting back to town and we want to get them out of there. So you've got to have some sort of documentation that you know, that you can prove how long they've been there. Now, if they're coming and going, they're not squatters or trespassers. So they come and they stay a week and then they go, you know, California beach. And then they come back, stay another week. Those are trespassers. If they're hanging out there and they're living there and they've changed the locks or squatters. Now you got to the police can come up and go, well, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do about it. However, you need to go to court. So then you're going to go to court to get them out. This guy says, call the police. If there's nothing they can do, then call me. He also says, don't try to do anything on your own because it's just a house. Some of these guys can be dangerous. So don't try that. Now, I'd have a hard time with that. If somebody broke into my house and I came back and I found them telling them that they were going to live there. Uh, I've got the kind of personality that, that just wouldn't sit well <laughs> and I'd probably get in trouble. And, uh, um, you know, I, I'd probably take the law into my hands kind of the way this uh, squatter guy does and just says, well, I'm just going to do what they did. I'd, I'd move in. I'd bring a couple dogs with me. I'd, uh, I'd cook onions every night. And, uh, and I would say, you know, I'm just a miserable roommate to be with. And Stephanie here says, same here. I agree. I would be the most God awful roommate you've ever had. And, uh, I'd get you out of there. So hopefully you're not experiencing any squatters in this market. So let's take a look at our market briefly here for a moment. And, um, voila, I guessed something and I was right. I said, I think active listings are going to kind of start flattening out and start going slightly downward as we exit the spring, you know, towards, towards June here. And it has, it hasn't gone down much, but it has gone down and it's mirroring, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm seeing on my seven day moving average, uh, which is interesting. New listings. You'll notice on the other one that, that actually active listings went down. Well, that's because new listings dropped off several days, past few days. They're just not putting them on there. And, uh, but, there's a little uptick up. So I think next week you're going to see active listings go up a little bit, not much, simply because this number uh, of sales, new contracts is, is dipping. And so that's going to continue to dip as we go through this month. And, uh, and that's what we're seeing here. It mirrors it on this chart right here that shows the uh, active listings under contract. You can see it went from 8,401 to 7,937. So down 500 units. If that keeps going down and new listings start coming back up, that's going to affect the Cromford market index, supply and demand. Instead of us being at about an 80% ratio now, we're probably going to get down to 70 and that'll change things dramatically. Number of price changes per week are hovering at 2000. So that hasn't really changed. These are price cuts. Um, nothing out of the ordinary, a little higher than, than what we've seen back here in 2020, 2021, nobody cut their prices then unless they started out getting really hot and they wanted to. So, um, and Cody here says waiting for it to say rates are going down followed by April fools. You know, you, you called me out on it. I was good. <laughs> My oldest son is one of the, he's the cartoonist that's an animator in California. And April Fool's is like his, it's Christmas to him. And 
I just sit all day and wait for it. And uh, he's backed off the past couple of years. I don't know. I think it's, I think something's coming. So here's average list price for square foot. We did kind of flatten out for a little bit and now it's kind of creeping up. See what happens. But with this new ruling and this new settlement with the NAR, there's so much confusion out there that now we've got, it's a weird market, folks. Really strange. We've already got sellers going, okay, take off the uh, buyer's commission. I'm not, I'm not paying anybody anything. Maybe a little early for that because uh, these new rules are not going to come into effect until July. And, and the, the only rules that are out there, like I illustrated last week, is that you just can't post what the buyer's agent commission is on the multiple listing service. You can't put it there. You can put it on your own website, but you can't put it there. So it's making the market confusing enough to where now people are sitting back for two reasons. One, I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to see how this shakes out. Or there's a percentage of people that are convinced, absolutely convinced that this is going to lower the price of housing. I read an article of a young man in California, and uh, he says he's been getting outbid, outbid, outbid. But now he knows that now that they've changed this, the way commissions are structured, which they haven't, they've just changed how they're published, uh, that he's convinced that his time's coming, that prices are coming down. So I'll ask this question. The seller who called his agent that said, I'm not paying that buyer broker commission, which is fine. Okay, you guys can do whatever you want. Um, you know, you've always been able to say that. Did he lower his price? No. The price of the house come down? No. So what are you waiting for? If you're sitting back waiting that this ruling is going to lower prices, um, I don't think so. Except I'll put this carrot out there. It, there's a lot of buyers that just can't afford what, you know, to pay a commission. So you've eliminated a lot of the buyer pool out there. And so that's going to hurt sales. And if that hurts sales, then yes, prices will come down. What you're looking at here will start to slide down. That I think could happen, uh, but I don't know. And that's why I'm calling it the summer of confusion. And it seems like you're not even waiting for summer to get confusing. We're jumping in right now. <laughs> and uh, so we'll, we'll watch this closely. Here's a new Walmart coming to Mesa out by the 24. And uh, it's huge. It's going to be 171,000 square foot, complete with a drive through pharmacy, grab-and-go pickup area, an auto care center, an outdoor center, a fuel station on the north side, of State Route 24 between Signal Butte and Mountain Road. So I don't know when it's going to be done, but uh, going to have 733 parking places. And uh, it's going to be a huge, huge addition out there where there's, uh, uh, is it by the East Mark area? It is south of the East Mark area. So 24 and Signal Butte, not too far. But since East Mark came out there, everything's been exploding in that part of the valley. So... Now, I spoke a little bit about the confusion that's coming, and so I am launching just about ready. I'll put it out, and you can see it in the ticker below here, uh, Rick Helps Consulting. Um, you can book a consulting call with me. I got a little video on here that that talks about, uh, you know, what I'm going to go over with you, and uh, you can book an hour call with me. And I'm compiling a lot of information as it comes in. I'm also kind of waiting to see what's going on with a lot of these rulings and, and in consulting, what I hope to offer is your options. In other words, I hear this, I hear that. Okay. Let's, let's get down specific for you. And, uh, um, what are you looking to do? Okay. Well, I want to, I want to buy a house, but I don't want to pay an agent a commission. So I want to do it without an agent. Okay. Well, here's your options. Here's how you can do that. Um, who's going to write the contract? Well, there's a lot of different ways to write a contract. You can have a listing agent write the contract. I don't recommend it. You can write a contract. You don't even have to write it on an official Arizona form. You don't. You can write it on a napkin if you want. But the listing agent will take that and he will counter back to you with an official Arizona form. So that's fine. Because remember, in real estate, as in most contracts, verbal means nothing. So I can call you and say, hey, I want this house for 500000 He goes, super, Rick. Let's do it. Well, unless you put it on paper, it doesn't mean anything. So, right, Stephanie? <laughs> it's got to be in writing. 
my dad was a real estate broker for years. He says, if I don't see it on paper, I didn't see it. Um, so there's options that you have, and it's the same with sellers. How do I list my house and not pay a commission? And what can I expect? Well, you can expect that you may get offers that say, Hey, in this offer, um, um, the buyer is requesting that you pay a uh, 2% uh, buyer's agent commission and they can say no. And, uh, so then it gets kind of sticky and muddy after that. Absolutely. Especially in real property law, it's gotta be on paper. <clears throat> so with all this confusion, um, I'm trying to throw something out there that says, well, let's talk about what you can and you can't do now for sellers. Um, I think, um, I get it. You don't have to, you know, you, it's weird what's happened. The National Association of Realtors had a requirement that you had to offer buyer broker compensation when you put a listing on the MLS and only had to be a dollar. Didn't have to be, they didn't tell you what percentage I had somebody comment last week says, well, brokers set the percentages and agents can't change anything that could not be more wrong. You can set whatever you want, but the system was set up as a way of attracting agents and buyers. And they're saying, well, because they could see that percentage, it's, it was steering. Agents would go, oh, they're only paying 2%. And this one's paying three. Let me show them this house. Well, look, let's face it. Buyers tell us what homes they want to look at. The old days of us combing through and only sending them certain things are kind of in the rearview mirror. And so they were able to see it on Zillow. So the National Association of Realtors came out and said, okay, we want these percentages front and center. So the Seattle area market did it a couple of years ago. They they put it out there. If you got it on Zillow, you could see that they were offering you 2.5% or they were offering you 1%. And it was in full view. Now they're saying, remove it. Don't put it on the MLS, So which means it won't show up on Zillow. It's gone. It's invisible. And... So now what are you doing? Well, you're forcing us to make a phone call. You pushed for transparency all this time. Now this lawsuit comes in and says, we don't like transparency. We don't like that. You can see the commission. We just want it gone. Okay. Poof. It's gone. But as a seller, if you're offering a buyer's agent commission out there, now the buyer doesn't have to fund it themselves. They're going to fund it through the purchase price of the home but they don't have to come up with it out of pocket if they don't want to, if you're offering it. And uh, that's the way the system's been set up. So if you flick that off your desk, just remember you're flicking a lot of buyers off your desk. They're like, well, I can't, I can't, I want the house, um, but I can't afford to get it with my agent. So I guess, um, I guess I'll just get rid of my agent and see if I can negotiate separately with you to buy the house. Um, I can try that. And uh, so that it's just going to be sticky. It's going to be a mess. And uh, I think now I don't think I'd be so quick to flick that off your desk because you're just going to eliminate a lot of potential buyers in the buyer pool. Just my personal opinion. I think it's going to be, you're going to see some real creativity show up in the industry. Like anything else, it takes time for people to understand really what the ruling was. And there's still a lot of class action lawsuits out there that are going on. that are costing some of these brokerages millions and billions of dollars and it doesn't to me it just doesn't make make a lot of sense but it's uh it's an interesting business and i kind of equate it to um how much does your um salesman make when you go in to buy a new car and uh new car new car prices and used car prices went through the roof right past couple of years went absolutely crazy was that because they were making more commissions because we've been accused of making all kinds of money and that's what's driving the price of homes up. When in reality, for many of us, 2021, um, it was hard to, to find houses. We were in the car a lot, writing tons of offers. You just couldn't get any contracts to stick. So there were a lot of people that got into the real estate industry because from their view, they thought, oh man, man, these guys are killing it. Let's go. Well, guess what? The average realtor in 2019 was making $43,000 a year. In 2023, they made $47,000 a year. So it didn't really go up that much. They're saying, well, the price of homes went up so much, they're killing it. 
The other argument that I can't push back on that I think has probably got some validity too is, you know, you're getting two and a half percent on an $800,000 house and you're getting 200, two and a half percent on a $2 million house. Isn't it the same amount of work? Well, sometimes yes. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's a lot more. Sometimes the clients in that, in that price range want you to pick them up at the airport. Want, you know, you have to do a lot of concierge work and uh, it can be a lot of work. Um, Sometimes if you're listing a home for two and a half million, in most cases, the homeowners want you to be there with the buyer that's coming so you can show them the house. But I mean, who wants to leave a lockbox on a two and a half million dollar house and say, oh, come in. So, you know, that could be a lot, lot more work for the listing agent as well. But again, sit down and talk to them. It's all negotiable. All of it is negotiable. And uh, that's what I hope people get to understand is that there's a lot of, a lot of uh, give and take on this, but in their effort to take this transparency and now hide it, they're forcing, for, forcing us to make phone calls. Hi, Tina. This is Rick. I see your listing over on third street. I got a buyer that loves the house. Can I ask a question? Are you offering any buyer broker compensation? Well, Rick, we're asking 600,000 for it. If you give us a full price offer, yeah, we're going to throw in 2%. Um, if you give us below that, we're probably going to go at 1%, maybe lower. Um, so yeah, now, did I just help the buyer at that point? So I have to be transparent with my buyer and call the buyer and go, okay, here's the deal. If we go in at full price, um, that increases our odds for getting the home, getting a contract, and they will, will pay me um, 2%. You and I have an agreement that if they don't pay me 2%, that you will pay me 2%. Uh, but if we come in at like, you know, 10,000 below, they're only going to pay 1%. So it didn't really lower the price of the house, did it? So that to me is going to make it lawsuits start showing up again, like crazy, especially agents that try to do dual agency. You go directly to that listing agent. And this is what I want to cover in the consulting call. You go to a listing agent and say, I'd like you to write the contract. And the agent goes, okay, well, let's do dual agency. That's where I represent you. And I represent the seller equally. That never works. Or he's going to say, okay, I'll write the contract, but I'm going to represent you as an unrepresented buyer. In other words, you have to understand I work strictly for the seller. Now, as a buyer, you're going to have to know every box in that contract. You're going to have to know every deadline. So, you know, you may want to hire an attorney um, and have walk it through with them. So uh, that's, it's going to be uh, interesting, interesting, interesting. So anyway, everybody have a great day. I don't know if I'm going to be on the uh, next couple of days. I got some stuff coming up. It's going to keep me a little busy in the morning. I'm hoping things clear up to where we could watch that uh, Starlink space shift get launched. It was supposed to happen on Saturday night when it was nice and clear, but there were so many storms in California, they didn't launch it. So, cause we're supposed to have great visibility here again in Arizona, but I don't, I haven't seen them put it back on the calendar yet. So we'll let you know when, that happens. In the meantime, everybody take on the day and have a great week. Take care.